think I understood most of that. Most of it. All right, you ready for our group picture? Come on, Dee Dee. I want to take a picture with everybody. This is going to be our official picture. Are you ready? So look, look cool, look cool. Oh, yeah. I have a quick question. Has anyone been to any other TED event? Raise your hand if you've ever been to a TED event. One. Me? I went to TEDx Charlotte. Anybody been to TEDx Singapore or something cool like that? <laughs> no? Not so much? I want to go to TEDx The Moon. All right, we are ready for our next presenters. Are you ready for our next presenters? Jonathan Crumpler and Zach Inks. Give it up. to our area. I think that this is a great opportunity for us to come together as a community and to share all the great things that we do as a community. Um, I grew up in this area. Uh, I love the mountains and foothills of Western North Carolina. Uh, when I was uh, ready to enter college, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And so I took some courses uh, at the local community college uh, just down the road in Burke County. Um, and as I, was, as I was going through my courses, uh, my mother noticed that I liked to doodle and I liked to draw, probably on uh, my notebook uh, for psychology class and, and science classes. And she said, well, why don't you take an art class? And so I did, and I, uh, I fell in love with art. Um, I took uh, drawing classes, painting classes, uh, sculpture classes. Um, and uh, I began my uh, academic career in art. I uh, went and got a BFA and an MFA. And it wasn't until later on in my career in art that I really fully understood what art was, which was a form of communication. Um, like a lot of young students who come into an art field, uh, you uh, want to really hone in your, your art skills. Uh, how uh, good can I design? How uh, good can I make this drawing? Um, you know, what is it that I do that's going to make something very beautiful or handsome? Um, communication is the real power behind art. And as an educator, now at the same community college that I started at, uh, I've really been able to unfold um, and unravel a, a new form of what art can be in terms of its power to the community and is to serve uh, the community. It's not just to have things that are on a wall or things that are displayed. And so as an educator, I'm very fortunate to be able to work with students on very powerful collaborative projects that do more than just uh, uh, show art that is pretty. This is something that can really impact the lives of our uh, community members. Um, I want to show you a series of slides of what, uh, what I mean by this and what are we doing with students uh, that uh, is making such a, a large impact on the community. Um, this slide is uh, from a uh, Burke Reads project, part of a national movement called the Big Read Project. Basically what this uh, uh, project was was to engage uh, students in the community, both at the public library, at uh, middle school, elementary school, and engaging in reading, um, the power of the story. So what uh, we did as uh, uh, with our students was to come up with a interactive installation that was going to be a theme within the Burke Reads project. With the, the book was Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. So uh, the process was, well, what do we do? Um, first of all, I had to go back and read Fahrenheit 451. <laughs> um, 
students who were in the program, some had read the book and uh, some others hadn't. Um, this engagement of collaboration became a powerful tool for education because we got the students to first read the book, um, maybe bring in an English teacher to really fully understand what the concepts of the book uh, were. So uh, collaboratively, through many departments, we came together and put together some concepts for our students to work on. And our students at the college work in new media. They work with all uh, various forms of media. They uh, interactive design, uh, content creation, which is all the great 3D content, and interactivity. Um, so this is a slide that we put together uh, for um, what we did uh, in terms of our interactive show. And this was held uh, downtown Morganton. And so you can see that uh, uh, within the installation itself, file was a big component. Um, uh, one of the slides here shows that uh, uh, people interacting with a Xbox Connect. Of course, we weren't using Xbox, we were using our game technology. All the content was created um, by our students. Um, I'll show you a little bit of a video uh, from the installation itself. Um, so what was really cool about it was is that, well, uh, what do we do for this installation? How can we really showcase what we do at our college uh, where a lot of people don't know, wow, like, what, what kind of interactivity do you, are you talking about? What kind of uh, technology do you mean uh, when you say interactive installation? The installation was called Mildred's Parlor. Of course, that's a concept within the book. Mildred was a character. Um, she had an interactive living room. But the students were able to engage in uh, web console apps, uh, mobile apps, iPad apps, and then the, also the Connect, which was the uh, um, motion detection uh, interactivity. And uh, of course, we see a little kid here trying to, to, to get into it. There, there the hands go. Um, uh, again, a great project for our students to be engaged in, and they learned, and it was a wonderful component. Uh, uh, for our education for the students. Okay, so our students in our facilities, uh, just like at universities or any other colleges, um, you know, they are a part of a program where they're, yes, they do have to learn all of the, the software skills, all the components of interactivity, uh, the things that they have to do in class. But if we were just to keep them in class, they were just to do student projects, they're not going to get that rich experience with serving real world projects for the community. And so we have at our college really made a big effort in seeking out projects, service learning projects, that the students can uh, get engaged in. Because it fosters a community engagement where we can expose what the students are doing to the, uh, with the community uh, services. And by that exposure, we feel that this can be a springboard for industry. We need to expose what we're doing at the college to the community and have that communication because that is what we feel will be a great component for economic development. Um, this is another project. We worked uh, in two graduating classes on a bio network grant. And uh, I put this up here because this was really one of the things that helped launch uh, this idea. It's certainly in my head in terms of, wow, this is, a, this is a powerful thing that we have here. We can get the students involved in projects where they have to research and learn, just like they would in industry, well, yes, I know how to uh, create a 3D model. I know how to animate. Um, I know nothing about DNA processes. <laughs> so this bio network uh, grant actually was to uh, visualize um, DNA processes like polyphoresis. I know nothing about DNA. So this was a great experience uh, for myself and other instructors in terms of learning um, a, a, new, uh, uh, a new component of, of, uh, of knowledge. You know, um, this was a great project for us to give a visualization, but the students learned an extra component 
Um, they, they had to learn the processes in order to complete the visualization. Of course, uh, the college certainly benefits. Uh, we can do uh, lots of projects to promote uh, through marketing, visualization, uh, uh, the college's needs, if there's a new building, if there's something that you know, we're going to be looking at that we need a visualization for. Uh, we have students ready to serve the community, college. Um, but uh, the exciting thing, and the thing that really the college is looking to do is to get out into the community. What are the services that are needed? Of course, we do these services for nonprofits. Um, uh, part of that service learning component is, is that you go and seek what the needs are for nonprofit agencies. Um, this is what makes it really kind of fun for the instructors and the students. Because when we seek out different types of grant projects or services in the community, we're really looking at all the things that are going to make the community a better place. Uh, this is an illustration of a native Jawara hut. Um, this is uh, uh, proposed to be at a park in Burke County, which is uh, um, uh, to promote uh, our archaeological dig in Burke County, which is uh, the Berry site, the site of Jawara. Um, again, a very rich uh, piece of uh, history and culture that we get to be a part of in terms of our program. Um, uh, Spanish settlers came in in the 16th century, uh, lived with uh, the natives in our area, in, in Jawara, and, uh, and all the Spanish were killed. Uh, all of the, the forts were destroyed. Um, very rich history for our area, and we want to be a part of promoting it. And so this is a, 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 a visualization that we will be working towards in terms of different types of output. Uh, we're looking at multi-touch uh, tables, but uh, visualization really to help drive, again, economic development, tourism. We want people to come to our area because we live in a very rich area with cultural history, cultural crafts, cultural arts, and technology. I'm going to introduce Zach Inks to really uh, tell you about some of the... You, um, go ahead. Take it on. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, with a lot of what Jonathan is talking about, this is really the concept I like to, to use is where the rubber meets the road, right? So, you have theory and you have education and, 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 and uh, uh, knowledge in institutions, but what does it really matter if it doesn't go somewhere, it doesn't do something, all right? So, a lot, a lot of the things that we've been looking at has been, how can we serve that local community? Uh, the slide you're looking at right now highlights uh, the beginning of a dialogue between our therapy rec department and our simulation and game department. Uh, two totally different fields, right? So simulation and games, high tech, you know, uh, visualization, 3D, all that kind of stuff. Therapy rec, soft skills, right? We had to bring these students together, show them their, the different worlds, but then find that common ground. Uh, with this exercise, we had students, uh, we have a, a nice climbing facility out there at the school. Uh, and we had students work with the other students at first, and then we introduced clients, okay? In this particular case, the clients were uh, uh, autistic adults. And so the students got to, got to get a feel for how these individuals with the soft skills work with the clients, how the clients will respond, and then start to brainstorm on how you could take technology to aid that. So this is one of the key technologies we're using right now. This is the emotive headset. Uh, if you've watched some of the, the, the big tech TED Talks and whatnot, they did a, a show on this. <clears throat> what this headset does is it actually allows you to map thought to input. Okay? It's still an early technology, uh, and it has uh, you know, some of the clunkiness uh, thereof. But the idea is, is pretty simple. Uh, different regions of your brain fire off when you think certain thoughts. So you can then train or map those thoughts, i.e. 
copy where those regions are at, and use those thoughts to then provide an interface for the, for the user. This is the reason we're doing this. There are individuals in our community who have no ability to interface with a computer in a, in a normal way. Uh, this is Chelsea. She has very, 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 very limited motor skills, but she is an incredibly bright young girl trapped in this body. Chelsea was able to master this technology, or at least the, the intro to this technology, within a couple of minutes, whereas she could not move the keyboard or the mouse to, to get any kind of interface with the computer, she was able to move a virtual box in space using her thoughts. Some of the other innovative technology which we're taking advantage of, and also um, this one specifically originates in this area, is with motion controls and motion input. You saw a little bit with the uh, Microsoft Connect, but this particular piece of hardware and software, which we have access to at the college, allows you to take the same sort of basic concept of sensors in your phones for tilt and, and, and movement and geospatial positioning, and wrap that into a flexible module, which then can be attached to anything. So what you're seeing, if you can look at the arm and the wrist, those are the same basic modules just linked together. And then the software, we said, OK, well, that means this one's an arm, that one's a wrist. You can tell the relative position. And you can use motion to interface with the computer. But the back side of this is really, what can you then collect and then data-wise and then reinterpret for, for the benefit of individuals? So the obvious application with this is motor skills. If it's software-based, you can take something like this and make an application, like a game, something that is fun and interesting, and have somebody you know, reach for an object. Then have the therapist crank up the distance they have to reach behind the scenes. And then that person reaches for the object again. And over time, without knowing it, the person's mobility should improve. And we'll also have metrics to prove that. One last thing I'd like to end up with before I get off to Jonathan is a little story um, from the founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell. He, um, in the early days of Atari, Atari, there was no established nomenclature or, or ideas of how you approach entertainment software for the arcades. So what became common with the engineers at Atari speaking of which, Steve Jobs was one of the early engineers of Atari, was that if, if no one came by and said, hey, wouldn't this idea be neat? Or isn't this idea neat? They knew they had a winner on their hands. And so what I'm asking you guys is to take this dialogue that we're talking about between community and the, the resources like community college and say, wouldn't that be neat? Come up with some ideas that you can share for us and where the rubber meets the road, that's where we'll find us. Because the road is totally useless without the rubber, and the rubber is totally useless without the road. Thank you. Stay. And uh, again, this is a, uh, this last slide, as you know, the 2012 State of the Union Address, this spotlighted North Carolina. Um, and as Central Piedmont Community College, in terms of the partnerships that are being made right now to put people to work, we feel that these projects that we're doing, yes, they are great services to the community, but they're also springboards for economic development. You know, these are the things that we need to do. So yes, call us, call your community colleges, and let's make a difference. Thank you.